Hey guys. All right, so I want to talk about salt and cholesterol. <laughs> when you cut, when you start any low carb diet, ketogenic diet, um, the carnivore diet, uh, you have to increase the salt. So you'll hear something about the uh, keto flu, and the uh, main um, the main issue is that. Uh, when you go through your glycogen stores, because you're not eating uh, any sugar anymore, glycogen is your stored uh, form of glucose. And when it's stored in your muscles and your liver, it's uh, stored with water. So as your body uses that glucose, uh, you're going to pee out a lot of the water. So, <clears throat> so it has like a diuretic effect. Uh, so you're going to actually eliminate um, more sodium than you usually would. It's not going to go to um, <clears throat> sorry. It's not going to go to a like hyponutremic level, like a clinically significant low sodium level. But it's lower than your body usually uh, likes, and it's part of the uh, keto adaptation or the fat adaptation. It can make you feel under the weather. It can um, also cause a, a slight depletion in magnesium, uh, uh, which can cause muscle cramping and uh, sometimes eye twitching. So anyways, uh, I'm sure anybody who's done the ketogenic diet um, is aware of what they call the keto flu. I don't really want to go into uh, that detail. Um, this is more for people that are aware of that, starting the diet, but uh, they've been told all their life that uh, salt causes hypertension. So that's the aspect that I want to focus on at the moment. Does salt cause hypertension. As you know, uh, since I was a child, all I remember is, you know, uh, saturated fat causes heart disease, cholesterol also, and we should avoid those like the plague, and we should minimize salt because salt causes hypertension. Um, so let's look at what salt actually does and uh, also uh, figure out does salt actually cause hypertension? And should we uh, take it seriously? Should we limit the salt or not? So the first thing is, um, you know, I just said quickly, yes, on a ketogenic diet, on a low carb uh, diet, increase salt. Um, initially, especially at the start, because you're gonna have this peeing effect, this diuretic effect, and it can deplete your sodium and it can give you uh, uh, symptoms uh, that make you feel a little bit under the weather. Um, as your body's adapting to using uh, fat as a main fuel, you don't want slight electrolyte depletions. It's going to make you feel crappy and it could lead uh, you to think that, well, this is not for me and I don't feel well on it. And it's just because you're not, uh, you know, taking in enough salt uh, with your food. And uh, yeah, it could, it could make you fail uh, the diet if you're not, you know, understanding that there's that slight uh, adaptation phase which, you know, some people hardly experience it and other people experience it significantly. They have a lot more trouble to uh, get through. Um, you might feel like lightheaded. That's one of the symptoms uh, that you should be taking more salt in. One aspect that uh, we don't uh, necessarily hear about is that um, a low carb diet creates a very low insulin environment within your blood. Insulin being a hormone has many functions, but one of the functions is uh, it has an effect on your kidneys and your kidneys is um, your kidneys are um, what um, retain or uh, filter out sodium. So when you have a standard American diet or the typical um, low fat and higher carb diet, um, you're going to have definitely a higher insulin environment overall in your blood. And that tells the kidney to retain sodium. All right. When you start the low carb and the ketogenic diet, Obviously, we are aware if we know the basics of the low carb and ketogenic diet that this creates a very low insulin environment, which is why it's great for reversing metabolic issues, insulin resistance, and even type 2 diabetes. The low insulin environment, okay, tells your body to eliminate more sodium, okay? So you're not retaining the sodium that you uh, would if you were doing a higher carb diet. <clears throat> And I uh, believe that um, that is because we're eating a human appropriate diet that is, uh, and my opinion that a human appropriate diet is not a diet that is majority carbohydrates. It just doesn't fit in um, ancestrally. It doesn't fit in geographically. 
uh, in my opinion, from my research uh, with Weston Price, Nutrition and Physical De Degeneration, the idea that uh, most of our uh, native cultures would salt heavily uh, the foods as a way of uh, preserving. So uh, salt didn't seem to be an issue and they really salted the, the food a lot uh, to preserve it. There was no other preservatives that they could, could use. So why is it that now uh, our ancestors were able to heavily use salt and now it, it's become an issue. So the first thing is, is that um, hypertension, okay, is not caused by salt. Hypertension is caused by inflammation. And just like I mentioned, inflammation is the same reason uh, that I've mentioned before. If you have a high seed oil consumption, you're using, uh, you, you're avoiding the traditional butter, um, creams, animal fats, the saturated fats, all the traditional fats that humans consume, all the animal nutrition that has that wonderful blend of omega-6 and 3 uh, that uh, will always keep that ratio uh, intact. The minute we start consuming man-made refined canola uh, oils, uh, sunflower, vegetable that's a blend, all of these seed oils, they are foreign to uh, um, our diet. They've only been uh, introduced uh, recently in the last century. Um, and this is in the form also of a hydrogenated form of seed oil, which is margarine. So all that to say is that uh, one of the major causes of hypertension is putting your body in a pro-inflammatory condition. So the pro-inflammatory condition, what it will do is uh, inflame uh, the vessels. So think of uh, your, uh, your uh, hypertension is basically your vascular system that is under a very high amount of pressure. So I have a tube, let's say this is a healthy diameter of your veins. Now you're becoming inflamed, okay? So there's, there's redness and puffiness and it narrows the tube. However, there's a, um, between here and now here, you still have five liters of blood flowing through. So what I'm basically saying is just common sense. If you have a narrowing of the tube and you have a constant amount of volume within that tube, obviously the narrowing of that will cause an increased pressure. If you had a gauge measuring it, as it narrowed, you'd see the gauge go up. If you'd let go, you'd see it go down. Common sense, common physics. So um, the aspect is uh, not caused by salt. The hypertension is caused by inflammation. Uh, and uh, damage. So I, um, I'm telling you that the high omega-6 consumption that's foreign to the body uh, is causing inflammation. Uh, a high carb diet also causes um, the um, insulin to be very high over many, many years, chronically high elevated insulin levels. Um, then after you get the metabolic disturbance and then after you're gonna have that toxic high level of insulin also further damaging and causing more inflammation. Then after you have all of the processed food for sure, these foreign uh, substances that we can't even pronounce, uh, the MSG, uh, probably uh, many of the modern uh, things that we're putting in uh, food to preserve things and stuff like that are uh, foreign and causing inflammation as well as um, high sugar levels. So all of these things, high omega-6 from the foreign seed oils, high uh, glucose levels, high insulin levels, as well as all sorts of uh, man-made garbage that's inside uh, of our blood will hurt the membranes. And once uh, that occurs, okay, you have uh, the cause of hypertension. Uh, that's why often people that uh, clean up their diet will have a reversal sometimes, uh, uh, well, most times, like when you lose a lot of weight, you're usually eating a lot cleaner foods and the hypertension can often be resolved. Um, but if you are inflamed, if you are doing a high carbohydrate diet, where, as I said, you are retaining the, so the sodium, the salt that you are consuming, what salt does do is it makes you retain uh, water, okay? So if you imagine now you have a very uh, inflamed vein, your vessels, your vascular system is inflamed, um, it's squeezing and now the overall pressure systemically is increased and we know the cause that I just said multiple times. Now, uh, if you're taking insult and 
it's especially a, a hard, high carb diet that is retaining and you're not, at, you know, as you're eating the salt, it's not being eliminated. You're going to retain more water. And now that's just adding to the volume inside the blood. So now you have more water inside the blood. You're puffy, you're retaining uh, fluid retention. So there is an association between salt intake and hypertension, especially when it's in relation to a standard uh, American diet or the standard recommendations. And we understand that there is actually a strong uh, link between a high carb diet that makes us retain the sodium. So yes, somebody who is high carbing it, somebody who we know has a very inflammatory diet should limit salt intake because it will make you retain more fluid and that's more volume inside your inflamed veins causing hypertension. However, that's because it's an inappropriate diet. That's because again, there are no essential carbohydrates. So when you are eating, ingesting things that are non-essential, problems happen, right? Um, and that's pretty much the gist of how, yes, sometimes you should limit salt depending on how you're eating and depending on how toxic you're creating uh, in, in your blood. The other aspect, we could kind of tie that in with cholesterol. First of all, cholesterol is produced by all of our body. Every cell, the liver, everything um, produces, has the ability to produce the cholesterol. Now, we know that the, I've said many times that the brain is 25% uh, cholesterol. Um, and uh, so the 25% cholesterol that's in there, um, the, it, how would I say? Meaning, cholesterol is used for many things, okay? It's literally the structure in your brain. It's used for uh, producing hormones. It's also kind of a um, flexible matrix for cells. It's what keeps the cell, it's like the structure, the flexible matrix skeleton of many of our vessels and membranes. It's part of every healing process. It's what uh, turns into vitamin D uh, and, and many other functions. So when you are ingesting, when you're eating something like uh, eggs or shrimp, the egg yolks or shrimps, things with, a, or pretty much any animal food, uh, there is cholesterol in it. And this is wonderful. This is needed, okay? When they say that you have high cholesterol, they're not talking about the actually cholesterol. They're talking about uh, uh, low density um, uh, lipoproteins and high density lipoproteins. These are actually nutrient transporters. They don't just transport cholesterol, but um, they are not really cholesterol. So when your body needs cholesterol and it needs to be shuttled around somewhere, the LDL, the low density lipoproteins are like the buses that pick up the cholesterol with, along with other things and shuttle it to where it needs to go. So eating cholesterol, okay, has no effect on the buses that transport cholesterol. That is a myth and it was a used, again, uh, very uh, strategically to demonize all of the animal foods and the eggs and, and stuff like that. So again, uh, it is now uh, admitted, it's just that it's not in the media that, uh, no, if you eat a lot of cholesterol, your body needs to produ produce less if you, uh, and vice versa. Uh, some people do have genetically higher levels of um, uh, cholesterol, but why would eating cholesterol have an effect on the buses that transport it? It doesn't. Okay, the LDL, all right, if we look at studies, you'll notice that, um, and I've popped this up in previous videos, I'm not doing it this time, people have heart attacks with low cholesterol, with normal cholesterol, with high cholesterol. Cholesterol is not a very good indicator of heart attack risk. But just like uh, the standard American diet that has the high omega-6, the high insulin, the high processed food, the high glucose, all these infl pro-inflammatory and toxic things that enter our blood, it doesn't only damage your vascular system and cause inflammation in the membrane walls, it also damages all sorts of things. And LDL happens to be uh, doing its job going around inside the blood. And if you have a very harsh and toxic environment due to your 
uh, nutrition, what's going to happen is you will also damage the LDL. Once the LDL become damaged and oxidized, then they do become problematic when they're trying to do their job. What happens with arthrosclerosis is that you have a tear first in the membrane. And I just said that's caused, I just explained why the membrane can become uh, damaged, why a fissure can occur in your, inside your vascular system, uh, for, which is why it causes the inflammation because it's uh, getting uh, damaged. Uh, when that occurs, cholesterol and LDL transport the necessary um, uh, material to repair things. So when the damaged LDL that's oxidized, that has uh, been uh, you know, damaged because of your uh, way of eating, comes to try and repair it, then it does become embedded. It is pathological. Yes, there is an association between cholesterol and arthrosclerosis, but there's, there's no cause. The cause is the omega-6, the cause is the uh, high glucose, the cause is the high um, insulin and the other processed chemicals like MSG and, and, and the hydrogenated substance that they say are healthy like margarine. Um, so then, uh, so yeah, there is an association. Now I've used the analogy uh, in the past that, you know, police are associated with criminals, but they're not the cause. Firemen are associated with uh, burning buildings. They're not the cause. So yes, cholesterol plays a role, but that cholesterol has to be damaged first by nutrition. Um, also, what else? Um, yeah, and the HDL is a tra is basically the high density lipoprotein. They make sure that the your LDL gets shuttled back to get serviced in your liver. So when you have high uh, HDL, which they call the good cholesterol, but it's not cholesterol. It's a transporter. Um, when this is high, it just means that you have a lot more resources to draw out the LDL. And it's good to have high LDL in all cases, but um, especially if you have a toxic environment because you're getting those LDL out. If you have a toxic environment, if your LDL inside contains omega-6 because that's all that you're feeding it, it's highly prone to oxidation. And then after they'll become uh, more prone to being damaged. Then after, if you have a metabolic issue where you have a high LDL from a high carbohydrate diet, which is known to cause increased LDL, and you have a low HDL, this is part of the markers of a metabolic uh, disturbance. Now, if you have a toxic environment, yeah, it's probably a good idea to not have too many LDL flying around because it's just like, you know, more, more bullets in the gun. So in a way, there are times where you should be concerned and probably try and limit the low density lipoproteins. Um, but again, these are all caused by what I keep on repeating. Uh, and so we, it's important to look at associations and causes. All right, guys. So in a ketogenic diet, you should be eating uh, appropriately, you should be avoiding all of these seed oils. You should be eating uh, a very low insulin environment, making a diet. Glucose shouldn't be uh, flying around, and you should be eating uh, clean, whole foods uh, that Mother Nature uh, provides and not man made. So, with all of these things, do not worry about consuming uh, salt. If you have the symptoms that uh, we talked about, the keto flu, uh, these are resolved by salt. My father, when he started uh, the ketogenic diet, he was on high blood, high blood pressure medication. He had severe hypertension. Uh, the, you know, uh, when he was hospitalized, uh, you know, it, it was the systolic uh, was well above 200. The diastolic was above 100. So he had severe hypertension. And that's not good if uh, you have a toxic environment. Uh, but when he started losing weight because he was eating a human appropriate diet, which is a low carb animal based diet, then after the inflammation started to subside, then he was taking his high blood pressure medication, but it was, he no longer had high blood pressure. So he was literally dropping his blood pressure too low and he had to come off of his high blood pressure medication because he didn't have it anymore. And that was with probably doubling the amount of salt. All right. I hope that that kind of makes sense. Uh, so that's the salt on cholesterol. All right, guys. See ya.